Oftentimes, people confuse the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service with the Department of Natural Resources who regulates fish and game in the state of Michigan, but this group of men and women serve a much different purpose. We're up here in uh, Hancock, Michigan, treating a few streams. This one here, the Gratiot River. Uh, we're treating Mud Lake Outlet, which is over by the town of Gay, Michigan, and also the Graverette River. Um, over toward Taiwola. Chris and his crew are currently stationed in the Keweenaw Peninsula with mobile labs and a team of researchers who are making sure that fishing in Lake Superior remains the best that it can be, and they're doing so by battling a predator amongst these waters that nearly wiped out the fishing industry many years ago. So as adults, sea lamprey will come up streams like the Gratiot River here, spawn in the gravel, much like a salmon or steelhead. After they spawn, lay their eggs, the eggs will hatch, and after they hatch, the larvae will go downstream, um, seek out preferred habitat, which is generally the sand and the silt in the streams, and they'll live there for about three to four years. Uh, it's non-parasitic, harmless larvae. This little fella may seem harmless, but within a few short years, if it weren't for Chris and his crew, it would develop nearly a hundred teeth and latch on to every fish that it can, sucking the life out of nearly every one of them. They'll metamorphose into miniature adults. They'll grow their sucker mouths, um, they'll turn color, grow eyes and they'll swim out into the Great Lakes where they'll parasitize on uh, the game fish species that we love, the lake trout and the salmon, um, for about a year and a half. And then they'll come back up the stream as adults, spawn and repeat the whole life cycle over again. Sea lamprey are not native to the Great Lakes. In the 1800s, the Welland Canal was created in Ontario, Canada. The canal bypasses Niagara Falls, which created a shipping channel between Lakes Erie and Ontario, allowing vessels to and from the upper Great Lakes to reach the Atlantic Ocean. As vessels increased in size, a wider and deeper shipping channel was needed to accommodate, and the retrofitting project of the canal began in 1913. Once uh, we opened up that canal, lampreys were able to freely swim up to the Great Lakes. Over the next 25 years, lamprey had made their way into all five of the Great Lakes. After the uh, sea lamprey invaded the Great Lakes, it didn't take very long for them to really decimate the uh, lake trout population, um, extirpating them in Lake Michigan, and in Lake Superior, nearly wiping them out. So what we do is very important to the fisheries and the economics of the Great Lakes. With lake trout near extinction in the 1950s, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission was formed as a joint effort between the United States and Canada, whose goal was eradicating lamprey and reviving the fish population. By the 1950s, early 60s, we started uh, treating streams after a lamprecide was found um, that was effective on killing larval sea lampreys. In the 1960s, 85% of large Great Lakes fish exhibited sea lamprey wounds. That number dropped drastically to 2% by 1983 and has remained under control since then through the use of lamprecides and a few other methods of controlling the invasive species. With over 50 years of data collection, the efforts of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service have lamprey control down to a science. Biologists monitor pH levels, stream conditions, and lamprey populations. They then use that data to calculate when and how much treatment is needed to maintain the proper balance that will not harm fish or plants in the watershed. Generally speaking, once a stream is treated, it doesn't need to be retreated for three to five years, such as the case with the Gratiot River. In 2015 was the last time we treated this river. Uh, after they found lamprey in here, and since then, lamprey have been found again in the stream, so we're back here to retreat it. Chris and his crew will be working in the area for a few more days before heading to other parts of the Lake Superior watershed and continuing their mission. I'm Lee Snitz for ABC 10 and the CW5.